Okay, I'm very happy to have here on the Goldstein on Geld show Professor Larry Kotlikov from the Department of Economics at Boston University. He's also a New York Times best-selling author, and he wrote a book called Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. Larry, from the title of your book, it kind of suggests that a lot of people are missing out what they could be getting. Is that what's happening? Yeah, the biggest um, <clears throat> mistake that people are making is they're taking the benefits too early. You know, uh, we're going to live potentially a very long time. The U.S. Census projects that there may be four, 4 million people over age 100 by the middle of the century. So we have to worry about the really uh, downside risk here, and that uh, risk is not uh, dying early, but really dying late and living on cat food. So if you wait to take your Social Security retirement benefit till 70, it's going to be 76% higher after inflation than if you take it at 62. So the big mistake is uh, people being impatient taking the benefit too early. There's also, uh, we, as we discussed in the book, a lot of other benefits that you can potentially collect if you're knowledgeable about them. And uh, they've just uh, actually passed a new law in uh, the U.S. that limits some of the um, benefits that people will be able to get, but there still uh, are strategies for collecting more than just your retirement benefit. So one of the problems that people say is they'll say, well, listen, I, you know, I understand that I could get more, but who knows if I'm just going to drop dead, and you know, I may as well, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well, if you, you, know, if you think about it, that's kind of uh, not the right logic, because if you die uh, early, suppose you're 62 and you die you know, at 65, having decided you're going to wait till 70 to take your retirement benefit. So where are you going to be when you die? You're going to be in heaven, and in heaven you don't need any money. <laughs> so <laughs> that's actually the good news, because from a financial perspective, you don't have to pay for yourself any longer in a mixed up way. We're, we're all scared about dying, and we think that uh, we better get our money before we die, but uh we're not going to have any regrets when we're in heaven. It's, that's what heaven's, heaven's all about. we got all the money we want, apparently, and virgins and everything else. So we, just, so, so we have to understand that Social Security is longevity insurance. That's also true for you know, non-Americans who are listening to your show that are um, getting an Israeli pension. It's a, a benefit that continues until you die. So if you live to 120, you're going to collect a lot more benefits than if somebody dies at 50 or, or at, six, at 70. So you've had this uh, bad outcome, which is you keep, keep living, but you've gotten paid off in that bad state of the world by getting more and more benefits. So by delaying taking Social Security, you're in effect buying more insurance. Before we move on to the next topic, I just want to focus on one more point. There are a lot of people who didn't do enough saving during their lifetime, and they do end up retiring at 62 or 64, and they need cash. Is it better for them to take a reverse mortgage or to dig into other savings or to borrow money? Or are there cases where they should just say, well, I need the money, so I'll sign up for Social Security? They should do everything they can to uh, try and delay taking their retirement benefit till 70 because uh, unless they have a very relatively short maximum age of life, not expected, but maximum age of life, because the building return from waiting from Social Security is far better than anything you can get on this on the market, and it's uh, com completely safe. So if you have to borrow money, if you have to borrow from your relatives, if you have to work longer, if you have to take your retirement account money earlier, if you have to mortgage out your mortgage your house, uh, it's still the way to go to uh, have a higher living standard, not just in the future but also in the present because. Uh, we're talking here about trying to have a higher living center on a sustainable basis mm -hmm. and, a safe, and doing it safely. We're talking with Professor Larry Kotlikov, the best-selling author of Get What's Yours, The Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security. He was also named in 2014 by The Economist as one of the 25 most influential economists in the world. Uh, Larry, let's focus a little more not just on one person but on married couples. What are some of the very important things that married couples need to know about claiming Social Security and spousal benefits? Well, there are still, under the new law, there's some people that were grandfathered who can collect a full spousal benefit at uh, retirement age and then wait till 70 to collect their own retirement benefit when it's higher. And that uh, strategy, strategy has been closed down for 
uh, younger people, but uh, for the next uh, few years, it's still going to be available for some old people, depending on their situation. So uh, we have this uh, software program at MaximizeMyCircuity.com, my little software company, that in a week will be updated for the new law, and people can see what's the optimal thing to do. Now, spouses can also collect uh, widow's benefits when their, uh, their partner dies if that widow's benefit is bigger than their own retirement benefit. Or if the partner dies early, they can take a widow's benefit first and let their own retirement benefit grow. Or they can do the opposite, take the retirement benefit early and then take the widow's benefit while, and let it, let it grow. So what's the best strategy here depends on the situation, on the earnings histories of the two people and uh, exactly when somebody dies and what they've done up to that point. So it is very complicated, but fortunately we have this um, very powerful software that can get it exactly right. And it's only $40. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, it's not like uh, gouging anybody to get the right answer. So talk to me a little bit more about this change in the law, which seems to be affecting the spousal social security that people, normally what people understood is that if, that the, if, if one of the spouses gets, is going to get a large social security check, then the, the partner could get half that value and then ultimately the full value when the original uh, partner dies. Is that not the case anymore? Uh, well, what happens for, for anybody who's under 62 at the end of this year, they're going to be forced to take uh, the larger of the two benefits, the retirement benefit and their spousal benefit, whenever they uh, apply for either of the uh, two benefits, and that's called deeming. So since they're only going to get the larger of the two benefits, and since they're being forced to take both at once, uh, one of the benefits will be wiped out. So the opportunity to get a full spousal benefit and then wait to collect a higher benefit later is being wiped out. Not for, you know, again, there's some people being grandfathered, but for uh, younger people, it's being eliminated. And I think it's somewhat nasty business because uh, a lot of people are counting on this. They made their retirement decisions based on it. And for some people, it makes a lot of, you know, it means a lot to, in terms of their their uh, decisions about whether they can afford to wait till 70 to take that much higher benefit. A lot of people are going to be induced to take their benefits early in order to um, <clears throat> get by. And that's exactly the opposite of what public policy should be pushed for because, again, the problem we have is people are going to be living too long, most people, not everybody, and they've come into retirement with too little in the way of savings, and the 401ks are quite small compared to what everybody had hoped. The employers do not uh, necessarily take care of people, and and so people relied on the government and their employers and, and were let down on both fronts. All right, so without getting into the politics, of it. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about what the case is going to be for someone who's divorced, or maybe just a general rule. How does that work if, if you were married for a long time and then you get divorced? What can or should you claim? Well, if you are married for 10 or more years, you can collect, uh, you are free to collect based on your ex's uh, work records. You know, the fact that you take more benefits uh, from based on your work, ex's work record doesn't reduce the uh, benefits the ex can receive. Larry, we're just about out of time, but tell me in the last few seconds, how can people follow you, follow your work, and actually get the get access to the software to help them make a good decision? Okay, so my uh, website, my academic website is kotlikoff.net, www.kotlikoff.net, and the um, website that has the uh, social security maximization tool is called maximizemysocialsecurity.com, maximizemysocialsecurity.com, and... Uh, there's also a uh, software program called ES Planner at ESPLANNER.com, which can help people figure out other things like when to take the retirement account in addition and uh, how to get the highest living standard, taking all kinds of things into account. Okay, that sounds great. And we will put a link to all of that at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinungelt.com. Larry Kotlikoff, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Anytime. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. 
The Goldstein on Guilt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to Doug at Profile-Financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Guilt Show. 